My name is Dr. Craig Shuttleworth and I work for the Anglesey Red Squirrel Project and today we're going to do a video so that you can learn how to detect grey squirrels in areas where they might be moving in and threatening red squirrel populations. Let's say you've just been walking through a piece of woodland like this and all of a sudden you get a glimpse of a squirrel and it usually is only a glimpse. What's the sort of things that you should look for in order to think, well, was it a red, was it a gray? There are key characteristics that might help you. But one of the things that I'm gonna emphasize over and over is that even if you're not sure and you think it might have been a gray squirrel that you've seen in a red squirrel area, tell someone. Trust your instinct. If you, if you think that you've seen a gray squirrel in a red squirrel area, tell someone. Contact your local squirrel group. Contact uh, the, the nature conservation body for your area. In Wales, that would be Natural Resources Wales. Tell someone. They'll be pleased to hear about the potential sighting and they'll act upon it and go and investigate. Right, we've got the two animals in front of us here, a uh, dead red and a dead grey. What these are useful for is illustrating the different features of the animals. I mean, classically, people look in a book and what they get uh, if they're looking for a picture of a red or a grey is a very red squirrel and a very grey, grey coloured squirrel. And the book never really shows you the variation. We're going to look at the features of the two animals close up, look at the colour variation look at the differences in size, I can talk about how they vary, uh, and look at the similarities between the two species. Right, let's have a look first at the grey squirrel. And what you'll notice about the grey squirrel is it's actually got a lot of red on it. Red round the face, red down the side of the flank here, and down the arm, red at the, on the hindquarters, it's actually got red right the way across the back. It's only when you see a red squirrel next to it that you realise that the red is very often a, a chestnutty or orangey colour uh, and the difference is incredible. So when you see the two together, there's no comparison. This, this animal here is the red squirrel and this is the grey, although it has got a lot of brown on it. It's got grey just here on the arms and around the neck and on the tail the tail is flecked with grey but it always has this outer fringe of silver this grey colour red squirrels never have that even if the red squirrel has grey in its coat it never has that classic edge to the tail The problem that you've got is when you see the animal in moving through the canopy and you only get a glimpse and you've got to try and work out which of the two species it was in light that can be incredibly variable and can make a red colour look almost black, it's difficult. So with the red squirrel, if we have a close up look, uh, this animal is pretty um, uniform in, in its coat. There's no black, but they can have black on their coat. There's no grey on this animal, but they can have grey, particularly down the flanks and on the head. The tail less so. The tail tends to be a brown or an orange or a red colour. And as I said earlier, there's no fringe of silver or grey to the edge of the tail. The tail is a key characteristic and size is the second thing that you should look for. But bear in mind, that although an adult red squirrel is smaller than an adult grey, juvenile grey squirrels are the same size as adult red squirrels. So at certain times of the year when there are juvenile greys around, you're going to find it quite hard if you just use size alone to differentiate between the two species. 
One last characteristic you can look for, ear tufts. The red squirrel has long ear tufts, but not always. The grey squirrel has no ear tufts, although in a very, very small proportion of animals you might have uh, hair that's a few millimetres long and does produce a sort of small tuft. It's nothing like this elongated hair on the red squirrel. But again, if you get a glimpse of an animal, you might not even get a chance to look at the, whether it's got ear tufts or not. You might simply see an animal turning on its heels to run away from you and, and uh, you won't see the head or the, or the features of the head or the ears. On the island of Anglesey, we've got 200 people monitoring squirrels in their gardens, either looking at them when they're using uh, bird tables, bird feeders, or they've, the people have actually bought wooden squirrel feeders. So you put the food inside and the squirrel can lift this lid, get in and out, bob in and out and, and feed. You can put hazelnuts, you can put sunflower seeds, you can put peanuts, you can put whatever you want. We also have feeders in woodlands on the island and we monitor those using cameras. And these are the typical wildlife camera that you can buy for between 60 and 100 pounds online. Well, here we've got a Bushnell camera. There are different makes. Uh, Bushnell just happens to be the one that we have here today. Uh, it's got batteries. Uh, you read the instructions from the manufacturer and you set it up ready to trigger whenever an animal uh, comes to a feeder nearby or a location on the ground if you've put food in the ground. And the way that the, the cameras detect is just with this little uh, sensor here. These are really good. These have revolutionized mammal monitoring. There's no doubt about it. You, you, they're cheap. You don't have to be there, obviously. It's going to be working 24 7 for you. It will trigger at night time and record in black and white. It's, they're great. But although they're really, really good and useful, there are a couple of things you've got to remember. Sometimes the image quality is poor, and you're not going to necessarily get the perfect image of a squirrel sitting posed for the camera. You may well get an animal that's moving, so the image is blurry. So again, if you've got a blurry image and you're thinking this might be a grey squirrel, you've got to think about the differences between the, the red and the grey squirrel that you can use to differentiate uh, the, the two species with respect to that image. Is it an image of a red? Is it an image of a grey? And the second thing to remember about these cameras, they can only take a photograph of what comes to the area immediately in front of the camera. And if you've got one camera in a large woodland, say two or three hundred acres of woodland, that's not a really reliable way of telling you that there's an absence of grey squirrels. So simply because you don't get an image of a grey squirrel does not mean to say that they're not there. You have to move the camera around and you have to rely on other things as well. So integrated management. Use the camera information and also uh, empower local communities with the knowledge that they need to be able to differentiate between a red and a grey. And, th and that means if someone's walking their dog and they see something, they know the key features to look for in order to, with, with some certainty, say, was it a red? Was it a grey? Just because it looked slightly red, does that mean to say that it couldn't be a grey squirrel? The cameras are excellent and I would and we would thoroughly recommend people to use them. They're lots of fun and you get images of all sorts of creatures, not just red or grey squirrels. Well here we are on the shore of the Menai Strait, and this is a good place to start talking about how grey squirrels move through the landscape. We know that they can swim across water bodies, they swim across lakes, they can certainly swim this sea channel. How else can they move around? Well, almost certainly they can run across bridges. They've been seen before uh, on freight trains, accidentally uh, move through the landscape. And then you've got either accidental or deliberate movement in vehicles by people. And that's all in addition to their natural ability to be able to use woodland as stepping stones across a the landscape. They're very, very invasive 
they can move up to 10 kilometers a year. This is, this is the invasion front. So a population moving across the landscape 10 kilometers a year. This is a highly invasive animal and we know that it outcompetes red squirrels for resources. But then the question is, well, surely one or two can't do any harm, can they? And the answer is yes, they can, because they carry squirrel pox virus. And we know that the squirrel pox virus doesn't cause any symptoms in the grey squirrel. But if the red squirrel picks up the virus, it will kill it. And it won't just kill one animal. The virus produces these horrible symptoms in red squirrels, and it will spread very rapidly. Uh, through the population and so it's important to be able to detect the presence of grey squirrels early and also intervene quickly, remove them quickly in order to protect the native red squirrel. And if you're interested in this aspect there's another video in this series and you can watch that and learn more.